All right, welcome to lecture seven of Math 2374. In today's news, the graphics card on my laptop continues to die a slow death, which is keeping in with the theme of things so far. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the chain rule. So let's remember a little bit about the old chain rule from ordinary single variable calculus. The chain rule tells us how to calculate rates of change when one input goes through an intermediate process before it becomes an output. So for example, if you are producing cookies and converting them into money, that depends on how fast you produce the cookies and how much the cookies cost. So if you wanna know the rate of change of money with respect to time, then you have to make use of the rate of change of the cookies, it depends on your production process, and also how much those cookies make for you in terms of money. And you just multiply those two processes together. Now that doesn't look exactly like the chain rule because we have to take into account the fact that those rates of change aren't constant. You know, people get sick of eating cookies and you get sick of making them. So if I really wanna know the rate of change at 5 p.m., what I have to do is I have to take into account what my rate of production is at 5 p.m. And I also have to know how many cookies I've produced at 5 p.m. so that I can calculate what the amount of money I'll be able to get for them is at that particular point in time. And so that kind of information gets fed into the chain rule it tells you where you're supposed to evaluate the derivative. You don't just evaluate the derivative at, you don't calculate the dollars per cookie at 5 p.m. You calculate dollars per cookie depending on what you've done. So that gets boiled down to this familiar pro formula, F composed with G prime at time T is F prime of G at T times G prime of T. Now we can also use big D notation for the derivative if we like, D of F composed with G at time T is DF of G of T times DG of T. So that's just an alternative to the prime notation, but it's going to be more consistent with what we're gonna see when we get to multiple variables. So when we have more than, when we have more complicated processes, it's very rarely the case that we have this straightforward input goes to output goes to output kind of situation. Usually, even if you only have kind of one in independent variable and one dependent variable, they usually feed through maybe several intermediate processes. In this case, you know, our time gets used to produce cookies and our cookies get used to produce money, but you know, maybe there are other things that have an effect on the amount of money we're making. You know, while we're producing these, we're also making use of electricity. The electricity is gonna cost us money. And so the total amount of change we should track in our money has to take account of, you know, both the positive change that's coming from production and also the negative change that's coming from our costs. So that's a simple thing. And there can obviously be, be a ton more different processes in the middle that influence what's going on. Now, when we do the chain rule in multivariate calculus, let's take that into account. This says that, you know, if we're taking stock of the rate of change of our money with respect to time, we have to account for the first process that tells us how much influence the first process is giving us and we also have to take into account the second one. So we have to account for the rate of change of our money with respect to the cookies and the rate of change of our money with respect to the cost in electricity. And how do we express that mathematically? Mathematically, there is a very clean formulation for the chain rule if we use this determinant, this derivative matrix, I'm sorry. The derivative matrix is the shortest, simplest way to write the chain rule in multivariate calculus. It's very, very clean. And it works for any number of inputs and any number of outputs. All it says is that D of a composite function, G composed with F, is equal to DG evaluated at F of X times DF of X. And that looks exactly like the old chain rule, except now we've made a couple of changes. First is that this is matrix multiplication. All of these are derivative matrices and they depend on vector valued variables. Those inputs are vectors now rather than just being numbers. And 
it looks like the old chain rule and it's easier to remember but it's more powerful and the matrix multiplication is handy the only thing we have to be careful about here is that order matters order always matters when we're doing matrix multiplication all right 